talking all week, but I believe you could give God a little bit better praise than that. Amen. Amen. Because if it wasn't for the Lord, where would you be this evening? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, stand all over the building and let's give God some praise. I believe that we said tonight is soul hour. Amen. So we're here for a reason. And since you're here, you might as well give him some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, just bless your name this evening, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While you're standing, if you have your Bibles, if you would turn with me to Hebrews chapter 6, beginning at verse 13. Hebrews chapter 6, beginning at verse 13. When you say have it, say amen. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13. And the word of God reads as thus. For example, there was God's promise to Abraham. Since there was no one greater to swear by, God took an oath in his own name, saying, I will certainly bless you, and I will multiply your descendants beyond number. Then Abraham waited patiently, and he received what God had promised. Now when people take an oath, they call on someone greater than themselves to hold them to it. And without any question, that oath is binding. God also bound himself with an oath so <clears throat> that those who received the promise could be perfectly sure that he would never change his mind. So God has given both his promise and his oath. And these two things are in unchangeable together. It is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. This hope is strong and trustworthy, anchor for our souls, and it leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. Lord God, we just say thank you. God, we bless your name this evening, Father. And Lord God, we just ask right now, Father God, that you, God, would just hide me, Father, behind the cross, God. Lord God, that they will not see me, God. Lord God, but they will see you this evening, Father God. And Lord God, I just ask right now, Father God, that, that you will anoint me, God, with your words, Father. And Lord God, that I will stand flat-footed and deliver, God. And Lord God, we just ask you right now, Father God, that you will shift the atmosphere, Father. Lord God, that it will be an atmosphere, God, that's conducive to preaching and teaching, Father. And Lord God, we just ask that you do these things, Father. And we will give you the praise. We will glorify you. We will honor you. And we will bless your name this evening. And let the chosen people of God say amen. Amen. And amen. You can take your seats in the presence of the Lord. This evening, I want to talk from the subject of standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of God. Has anybody ever had a promise broken or someone said they were going to do something or give you something and they didn't come through? Maybe someone promised to love you and cherish you forever, but that ended up being a broken promise because all you got was headaches, heartaches, and tears. Sometimes as humans, we, we say things without thinking about what we're saying and we say things that, that it may not be perceived the way that we say it. Oftentimes we forget the perception varies from person to person and, and, and we perceive something one day may not be how we perceive it tomorrow. Sometimes we make promises to people that we really can't even keep or we don't even have the power to carry out. And we say things like, I'll give you the world knowing that we can't even give 
a rock in the world don't belong to us. But I'm so glad that as I read my Bible, I've come across many promises that God has made that you and I can stand firmly on. And we can stand in agreement with it because God keeps his promises. And according to the Vines Dictionary, promise means a gift graciously bestowed, not a pledge secured by negotiation. Webster said it's a declaration that something will or will not be done, something you can stand on, and I believe that's something like money in the bank. A promise of God is a fact. God is not a wavering God, and all of his promises shall come to pass, and you can count it done in Jesus' name. You and I are the means by which his promises are manifested, and we should stand on his promises for ourselves and for our families and for those that we serve in ministry with. Claiming God's promises is the very heart of our prayer life, and you have to stand on his promises and give his word back to him. You got to tell God sometimes that you said in your word that if I keep my mind stead on you, that you would keep me in perfect peace. And you got to be specific with God. Don't play around with them. Come on, somebody. But what does it mean to stand on the promises of God? And how does one actually stand on a promise? Well, I'm glad that you asked. When we see the First, we got to know what it is that God has promised. And according to one person's count, there is approximately 3,573 promises in the Bible. And the word promise itself occurs 13 times in the King James Version. But if Jeremiah 29 said, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, they are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and not hope. And if Matthew comes back, and says, come to me, all you who are labored and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, then why is it that we spend time worrying about the things that we can't control? Paul said in Philippians, and this same God who takes care of me will supply all of your needs from his glorious riches. Mark told us that, that all things are possible to him that believe. And I believe Romans said something. It didn't tell us that all things work together for the good of everybody. But I believe it said all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and that are called according to his purpose. And it makes me shout to know that, that Isaiah said that his thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways. And so when man promises fail and they don't come through, God's grace and unmerited favor towards us won't allow him to forget about us. He always keeps his promises because he's ordained and will that he won't forget so just imagine what would happen if he forgot about us some of us would be in a mental institution on skid row in prison or simply just a hot mess but promises are going to be broken hearts are going to be hurt trials are going to become but David said, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So I believe what David was saying was, I might would have given up. I might would have quit. I might would have thrown in a towel. But because I know that I know that I know that I know that the God I serve, and I can believe and I can make it, and I will stand on it, and I will see the salvation of the Lord because he's on my side. God's word is truth and we know that facts can change and, and facts can change because we see it in the Genesis world book of records that facts change all the time. Some person beats another person out. That was fact when it was written, but it changes. But God's word is truth. We hear in a courthouse where the judge has to tell you to stick to the facts. But the word of God is, uses truth, and it's used 224 times in the King James Version. And in John 17, 17, it lets us know that God's word is 
truth. And God is a God that does not change. He may change the way he deals with our situations like he did the people in Nineveh. Instead of destroying them, God spared their lives when they repented. And we can see God's character here in this scripture. God made a promise to Abraham and he swore by his promise. And oftentimes you hear someone say, I swear by my mother because we feel like our mother is greater than we are. But who was God to swear by? Since there's no one higher or greater than himself to swear by, he had to swear by himself. But God promised Abraham that he would be blessed and he would multiply him. And he did this and he showed his unchangeable character by providing an oath. We see in verse 17, an oath is your confirmation. It signifies that this is final. And God is a man that shall not lie. And you can stand on his word. When he swore by himself to Abraham, this let Abraham know that there was no one else that could turn or to, he could trust to be bringing forth the promise. So in the book of Genesis, he told him to move out of the country. He told him that he was be going to become a great nation. He told him that his children was going to be blessed, that they was going to end inherited the land. He told him that he was going to be a father of many nations and he sealed that promise with an oath and that promise gave us the justification through faith and eternal inheritance. But Abraham had to patiently wait until the promise was manifested. He was 75 when God made the promise and it wasn't until 25 years later that the promise came to fact came to pass and this is a long time to wait on something and imagine somebody owing you some money and, and every time you see them they don't say nothing about your money and you just keep waiting and you keep waiting and every time you saying the first thing popping to mind I know they owe me some money and I know they remember they owe me some money but I believe Abraham was probably saying this same thing okay I was 75 when you told me this okay now I'm 85 now I'm 95 25 years I'm past, I'm 100 years old. God, when is the promise going to happen? Sarah will begin to make some suggestions. Okay, you know the story. And he, but I believe that Abraham still trusted in the promises. And Genesis 21 lets us know that God keeps his promise and he's not slack with them. And he doesn't fall short, nor does he forget. And God doesn't operate according to our trust in him but he operates according to himself through all of our broken promises God can be counted on and if he spoke it stand on it you can lean on it you can depend on it and put your trust in God another thing that you have to do is accept God's promises and we can't just name it and claim it without worshiping our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the name that's above all names. And promises must be applied by your faith. And Charles Surgeon said, and I might quote, do not treat God's promises as if though they were curiosities for a museum, but believe them and use them. So by exercising our faith in God, God's promises become personal. God's promises of salvation through faith in Jesus. It's a promise that you can trust and you can stand on it. And when you stand, you remain motionless or, or steady or you stand firm or steadfast or situated. And this makes me think about a solid rock, a firm foundation, something that's going to hold you up in a time of trouble, something that's going to keep you afloat when you are sinking and drowning. And when you position yourself, you stand flat-footed and you deliver. When you're standing on the the promise you're not wavering with it but you stand flat footed and I believe that the songwriter said said <clears throat> the songwriter said that my hope is built in nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest rain but wholly lean on Jesus name oh I need some help in here this evening but on Christ the solid rock I stand all other grounds are seeking sand I promise I'm not going to keep you. But lastly, you got to hold on to the promises of God. Hold on to the promises 
of God. Sometimes you have to wait a long time before the promise is fulfilled in our lives. But Hebrews said, let us hold fast to the confessions of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. So it's going to come to pass. And if God said it, then you must believe it. Don't give up and don't bail when you think God has forgotten about you because he has it. And Hebrews said that for you have need of endurance so that after you've done all the will of God, you may receive the promise. It may take some time, but while you're waiting, keep on praying, keep on praising, keep on worshiping, keep on rejoicing, keep on speaking those things that are not that as if though they were. And for your perseverance, you keep on pressing, you keep on fasting, and you keep on believing. It may seem like it's not going to happen, but you stand on it and don't give up because Christ is all already died for our sins. He took all of our burdens and all of our problems to the cross and he was crucified for our hang-ups and our mess-ups and and if he did all of this then why can't we stand on the promises? There's no other God that died for us and there's no other God that would ever go the extra mile for us and why can't we believe God and just Take him at his word, standing on his promise. The word of God is not only a foundation that would not move, but it won't change and it won't vary. So when you stand on the promises of God, he will not, he will not only do the natural, but he will do the supernatural. Because every now and then, you need him to do some supernatural things. You need him to work some things out in the supernatural. Because it's one thing to be able to buy a car when you've got a down payment and a good credit score. But it's another thing when it's the supernatural natural when your money is funny and your credit won't get it or when you are step above broken you're in the line of lack but when you think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you you still ought to shout in your soul hallelujah and I thank you he shows up and he always shows out and he makes a way out of no way. And he can do all of this because he specializes in the impossible. All the things that seem like it can't be done, that is where God specializes. And he does the things that people say you won't be able to do. This will never happen. You won't be able to achieve that. But in the spirit, through your faith, all things are possible to them that believe, but you got to make up your mind that you're going to draw near to God. You may have tears in your eyes, but you stand on his promises. Can't sleep at night, but you stand on his promises. If you have to crawl, you crawl, but you stand on his promises. If you have to leap, you leap, but you stand on his promises. If you have to jump, you jump, but you stand on his promises. Stand on the promises of Christ, your king. Through eternal ages, let his praises ring. Glory in the highest shout and sing but you stand on the promises of God when the storms of life is raging and you're feeling miserable and dealing with the spirit of doubt and fear God's promises cannot fail and the living word of God shall prevail so you keep on standing on the promises of God and remember that the promises is assurance that God gives to us and we can walk by faith while we wait on him but in order to know God's promises, you got to dig deep into his word. And the promises of God can be found from Genesis to Revelations, and they reflect his character. So no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken to us to the glory of God. The word yes is a Greek word, which means certain and true. Amen is a Hebrew word that means so be it or it's already done or fully accomplished. So promises from Christ must be received and claimed by us. So we got to speak the promises of God over our own lives. And But in order to claim the promises of God, you first have to know him. You can't know about him. You can't know of him. But you need to have a relationship with him. Because I believe that God is looking for some people to say yes to him, to say amen to him him and when you say yes to God you're pulling you're, you're putting your trust in God you're opening a door to him to rest rule and abide within you and you're allowing him to fix it like he said he would saying yes means 
may seem like it's going to take a long time. I believe Abraham was saying this thing is taking so long. And I believe that he began to question God and he, and he began to probably listen to Sarah. And we know where he did. And, and because Sarah made some suggestions and sometimes our friends will make some suggestions and sometimes they make sense, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're good suggestions, sometimes they're not. But I believe Sarah got this thing twisted. See, she was looking at it from her perspective that she was getting old and she was outside of the childbearing age, but she didn't realize that the promise wasn't to her. God never said that you're going to be the mother of many nations, but the promise was to Abraham that you're going to be the father of many nations. So we got to stop allowing people to help us determine what God's promises are. You know what God has spoken in your life. You know what God has said to you. You got to stand on the promises of your own self. When you say amen. You were in agreement with the word. And it's your declaration of faith. And you're believing that it's in alignment with God. And when you're saying yes, you're saying, God, I give it all to you. I've tried it my way. I've done it this way. But God, I say yes. And I'm going to be like Abraham. And I'm going to stand because 25 years is 25 years. It doesn't matter whether you're 25 years in God's hand or they're 25 years in your own hand, but they're still going to pass by. So why not put your faith in God? Why not trust him? Why not stand on his word? Why not believe him? Why not trust in the Lord your God? Promises will be made, and people will fail us, and uh, friends will deceive us, but our Heavenly Father will always be with us, and his promises brings us hope this evening. Will you trust him? Because every promise in the Bible is yours. Every chapter, every verse, and every line. And this evening, I challenge you that every time when you read the Bible, when you see a promise of God, just underline it and begin to speak that promise into your spirit until you get it. And in all you do, stand on the promise of God. Father, we just thank you. God, we glorify you. We just honor you this evening, Father. Lord God, we just ask you, Father God, that your word, Father God, will fall on good ground, Father God. Lord God, that we would stand on your promises, Jesus, no matter what the situation is, God, but we would lean and depend on you, God. Lord God, that we won't doubt you, we won't waver, God, but we will stand on you, the solid rock, Father. Lord God, if it's not for us, God, the, the Lord God, that we will stand for somebody else this, mo this evening, Father. So, Lord God, we just ask right now, God, that you add a blessing, God, to your word, Jesus. Lord God, we thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Can we just have everybody just connect with somebody? Pray for everybody. You're going to pray for the person whose hand you're holding. Hallelujah. 